are welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. I'm so glad to be here with you. I'm glad you're there. Trusting the Lord for new viewers today. And <clears throat> boy, I hope you regular ones know how much we love and appreciate you. And a special program today because we are indeed fortunate enough to have Carol Kent, awesome author and speaker on this program once a month. And this, this is the day. And it's interesting um, how the Lord brings situations together because I, I know she'd been on our show before and we always talk about prisons, prison ministries, prisoners. And um, I was sitting right here in this chair and the Lord kind of spoke to me and said she should come on every month. And I mentioned that to her and she agreed to do it because we're probably one of very, very, very few ministries that put a spotlight on the prisoners. And Jesus mentioned them as one of the most moving uh, chapters, uh, verses, uh, just giving us his words. You know, I was hungry and I was thirsty and I needed clothes and all these things. I was in prison and you didn't come. And I think it's so interesting how he highlighted and put a spotlight on that. And that's what we try to do because Carol's son is in prison for the rest of his life. And she has made a ministry out of this that's helped so many people. So you're going to love her if you haven't met her. And I'm going to join Wanda. She's with me again today. We're going to fix a California pasta salad. And this is one, just use your imagination. We'll give you the basics and then take it and run with it. Before I join her, though, I again want to remind you we are viewer supported. And I've said so many times, you know, we try to give you those things that are going to help you make your life better, give you information you might not otherwise get. And I, I don't know, I feel that's worthy of some support. And I do know if everybody who is prompted by the Holy Spirit to give an offering to this ministry, we would have far more than we need. So I hope you're feeling that prompting right now. And if you use a credit card or debit card, use that 800 number, 1-800-229-0059. And Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida. 3375 if, if you still write letters like I do sometimes, okay? Thank you very much and glad to be back here with Wanda again. You cooked for many years on this program. Yeah, I sure did. And she is one great cook just at home with the grandkids. It's so sad because really I don't cook anymore. Yeah. Unless the kids come to town and I'm like, oh, this is so much effort. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I want to change that tune because it's great to cook for your children. I they know, love but it. there's viewers out there that know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's like, oh, I haven't done it in so long. It's like, oh. Well, you know, I lived in California when they call it the Golden State. Yeah. Uh, it's not the Golden State anymore if you ever look at the news. But I'm telling you, they had the greatest restaurants, a lot of healthy things that hadn't found its way to the Midwest yet. So... Uh, we'll put this together okay. and I'm going to um, put together the dressing and she's going to put together the salad and that's uh, I this think that's 16 ounces of it um, is. pasta cooked. Yes ma'am you are absolutely right. Oh no when I was when I was in California people were moving there like oh you can't believe and it was wholesome and now um, they keep okay. voting in these strange people. I'm just going to just add. You, That's this a zucchini? Is zu zucchini, and this, I'm not sure how much this might yeah. be. Let's and see, two. Two I medium put zucchini. A, a whole bottle of um, Italian dressing. One large cucumber. And a quarter cup of Parmesan mm. cheese. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sesame pepper. seeds. Yummy. Uh, poppy seeds. I'm onions. actually taste this dressing really. I probably could do without the onions, but I might. I actually might do like green onions because I do eat those. I don't know why. Crazy. Really weird. Yeah. I'm well, green this onions is going to be. Oh, that bowl's not big enough. I'm kind of worried. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest one we got. Yeah. Because you still haven't got the. Tomatoes in I know, I haven't it. gotten any of it in. Let's see if this will twist it better, but I'm not so What do you think certain. of just using what God gave you your hands? Oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, well, I had this feeling these we are the should tomatoes. probably hold back a little bit of the pasta. But, oh, oh where's your Prince, source of adventure? Beautiful. Look at the 
Look yeah. at the colors in that. We're gonna have fun tossing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna taste I'm this because I'm dying to. Do it home. It's a little bit easier for me. This dressing is really good. You saw how easy it is. This is oh, very colorful. Is. Isn't this delightful? Yep. yep. Uh, Wanda and I were Forgive talking ahead mess. of time. We we're wondering if it needs all this dressing, but we'll find out. Well, there's a lot of pasta here, so it uh -huh. probably would. And you know, I've off, I've often um, discovered when I made these pasta salads years years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything I did it seems like years ago. Um, <laughs> I think it's better if you refrigerate them because they always... Before you serve it? Before you serve it because it absorbs some wonderful flavors mm -hmm. and it's like I got a lot of onions over here on this side. Well, I'm going to start slowly yeah. pouring some of this in. I'm not sure we'll want to use all, but... Well, we may. Um, Calls for it. We'll see. Let's go with that much. For me personally, I don't like a, a, a lot of dressing on a salad. I like just kind of a whisper of it. Yep. This, that might be a whisper, I'm just that saying. That might be a whisper. We need more, right? I, well, I'm kind of thinking. We haven't even dug down to the... Yeah. Okay, now go crazy, girl. Go crazy, girl. Just go crazy. Ah, uh, so much. Ugh. Okay. And I would say this is your entree. Uh, good hard roll here if you want to if you want to take some yeah that, you want to get rid of some I do want to get rid of eliminate some of the volume here you try some of that good stuff and um, I didn't go into the amounts because for me I would cut some back I would add more and I think you would too but um, I'm telling you this this is a meal mm. it is delicious my friends that dressing is wonderful and you saw how easy it is to make wonderful stuff and like Wanda said it probably tastes a lot better if it's in the refrigerator for a little while before you serve it yeah so the information is coming up on your screen <laughs> uh, we're glad to email it to you or if you write to us please include a self-addressed stamped envelope I think can I've you got say that I, I think I got food all over <laughs> my mouth no you don't and we'll get it right out to you. Otherwise, we really can't hardly handle them anymore, but we sure want to. So um, we'll give it to you, and the information's coming up on your screen. And then if you haven't met Carol King, I think Carol King, Carol Kent, I think I can That's a song. absolutely Sing your song, right? be sure that you'll love her. <laughs>I call Carol Kent our monthly blessing. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. And you are a blessing to me. I, I, I know the Lord put this thing together. I'll diverse, digress just a little bit. Um, you preach to what you call cowboy wives? Well, Texas? Uh, this past weekend, I was in Tyler, Texas, and I was told that it would be the cowgirl getaway weekend. And I wasn't really well, sure that what like that fun. would look like. <laughs> it did sound like fun. And there are cowboy churches all over Texas. And uh, evidently, many of them are transient. You know, they're, they're traveling a bit. And uh, many of them uh, have lived uh, lives that have involved, uh, in some cases, some abuse, some hurts, some pains. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not with their families. Uh, they're extended families, but they cling to each other. And I could not believe it. 2,200 women were there, Arthelaine. Really? And they came with their big hats and their big rhinestone. They were like buckles. a cowboy hat. Cowboy hats, and I loved it. They had on their boots right up to their knees, and boy, were they ready to worship. And uh, we had the Bent Bucket Band. How about that? 
for a worship ben team. Buck the ben I bet you can't say that three times fast. I'm not going to try on TV. <laughs> but they were so God honoring. And I'm telling you, we just lifted the roof off with praise and worship. And uh, my precious friend, Michelle Cushat, who has had three surgeries for tongue cancer, gave her testimony, and she now has a third of her tongue. And she said, I will lisp for the rest of my life, but I will speak praises unto the Most High God. Praise and God. Uh, it, it was just a powerful time of worship. And didn't you say a lot of them accepted the Lord? There were those who were oh, not Christians who were there. I, I was so honored to be invited to do the altar call and the invitation at the closing message. And there were over 50 Praise women God. out of those 2,200 who made first time commitments to Jesus Christ. And then another one of our speakers was Laura Petherbridge, who speaks on step families. And, and one of her messages was, who's your daddy? Like this, some mm -hmm. of them don't know who their daddy is. That's they right. were raised by their mamas. And two women came forward and I was privileged to pray with them. There were hundreds who came forward, but the two that I prayed with were sisters and they were sobbing. And and, and one of them said, uh, we're sisters, and I know who my daddy is, but my sister doesn't know who her daddy is. We have the same mama. Yeah. And then here with these tears coming down their cheeks, uh, the, the other sister said, but now I knew, know who my daddy is. It's Praise my God. father, God. <laughs> so it was such a unique yeah. and precious group. I mean, I just could sense the anointing of God's spirit all over that place as women bent their knee and their hearts and said yes to Jesus. It was a privilege. Well, I've lived a long time and I've never heard of, uh, call them cowboy wives? The, cow go the cow cowgirls getaway. Cowgirls getaway. Some that of them like are wives thing. and yeah. some, some of them are real cowgirls themselves. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is what Carol does all year. And she finds herself in many parts of the world teaching and writing, um, and she's constantly got new books coming out. This one book is so unique. We're going to talk about it today. We've talked about it a little bit before waiting together. And this is uh, Hope and Healing for Families of Prisoners. However, there's so much good stuff in here that doesn't really relate to prison uh, that would be beneficial for anyone. And if I remember correctly, the publisher on this book um, realizing that the niche audience wouldn't be that big, so yes. we've got to do it anyway. Boy, isn't that just like Jesus? It is just like Jesus. And our Daily Bread Ministries, the mm -hmm. ones who do the daily mm -hmm. devotionals, are the ones who said, uh, we want our, our publishing house, Discovery House, to do this. And there are 90 individual devotionals that are short so people mm -hmm. can read them at the table or in the car and uh, just share with the, with their family members how they can hold on to hope in the middle of a, a discouraging Absolutely. time. Absolutely, and we're going to keep her website up. You can get all of these through the website. It's called Waiting Together. I'm sure it's on Amazon it is. and all of those mm -hmm. good things. Last time you were here, a month ago was, I thought, a precious time because we talked about purposefully looking back to see where God had helped us. Yes. Uh, remember the story of the 10 lepers who came to Jesus and only one said thank you. Yes. I think it's beneficial if we look back our whole life mm -hmm. and say, God, forgive me for being neglectful, but boy, you were there and mm -hmm. I thank you. And, and then you were here and then, and then you're here. And we went through some of that last time. Yes. And you have a story you sent to me that would kind of fit into that, wouldn't it? It does so perfectly. Uh, for some of our viewers who have read When I Lay My Isaac Down, you'll recall that uh, I talk about stretcher bearers. And Arthelene and I have talked about people who carry you when you can't carry yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, three women contact us and say, we want to put together a group of stretcher bearers for you. And Arthelene, they put together a once a month email update on how people could pray for our family. And they even Boy. shared what our tangible needs were. And one of those three women was my dear friend, Becky. And Becky 
hung in there for the full two and a half years that we waited for Jason's trial, always coming up with these creative ways that people could offer assistance to our family. I mean, we were loved with the love of Jesus. Mm. And never did she know at that time that she would wind up with her own young adult son uh, getting arrested two weeks ago. And uh, I, I, it just broke my heart because I feel her fresh yeah, brokenness. Yeah. And I got this email from her just days ago sharing what God had done. And it just blesses me so much. Yeah, try to give the viewers uh, just uh, a, a, the, a little bird's eye view of this. Yeah, if you think Jesus and, isn't watching over, oh my goodness. listen to this. Um, she said, I went to the post office to get a money order in the mail. And many of you know that the only way inmates can get money in their accounts is through money orders being sent to the Department of Corrections. And so it's it's not an easy way to get money into their accounts. And she said uh, she would also had a letter for her son. And she said, I just barely got in the door before it closed at two o'clock. And I was the last person standing in line. And she said she stepped up to the counter and there was a postal worker there. And he asked how she was twice, which is unusual <laughs> after a long day. And uh, she said, I, I said, well, um, I, I'm OK. How are you? And uh, he grinned from ear to ear and he said, uh, as long as I have such a blessed relationship to him, nothing else matters. I don't usually I hear that happy. in the post office. <laughs> uh, I have never heard a postal office worker no. say that to me. And she said she got all cheered up and she told him that this was a blessing for her to hear because uh, she was getting a money order to send to her son who had been arrested two weeks ago. And she said, that's when business stopped and we had church. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm trying to envision uh -huh. this in the local post office, Arth Lane. And she said the man turned her receipt over and on it he wrote, be still and know that I am God. And then he wrote Psalm 41 and he said, you need to read this, young lady. And uh, he said, wait, no. And he said, uh, you can probably read the whole psalm quickly. And he looked it up on his iPhone and had her read the psalm right as she stood there at the post office, right there at the counter. And she said she got all teary eyed and thanked him. And then she went out into the lobby to finish up the rest of what she had to do on her package. And she said, all of a sudden, over a vent or some kind of a loudspeaker while she was weeping with being so touched by this encounter, she heard this voice and she said it was almost like it was a disembodied voice and it said, please don't cry, lady. Everything's going to be okay. And she she said, I looked up, I said, God, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it yeah. just startled her for a moment. And uh, then this man came out and he said, I also want to tell you to read Psalm 121. He said, no, wait, I'm going to recite it to you. And so she said, he put his hands out like this, stretched up toward heaven. And he read, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, Whoa. the maker of heaven and earth. And she said she was in a puddle of tears by that time. Yeah. And she said, you didn't know this, but my son was a commercial fisherman and uh, you have just told me to tell him to get out of the boat and let God direct him in the way he chooses. And she said, that will make so much sense to my fisherman's son. Isn't it just amazing that he would use that those words? That whole story. Oh, it's so powerful. And she said, I don't know about you, but my experience at the post office doesn't usually come with a <laughs> psalm, a sermon, and a blessing, mm -hmm. but it did today. I, I know in her situation, it was so fresh. Oh. He hadn't Brand been new. in prison very long. Had he? Oh, no. He'd be, he's Couple still weeks. in jail yeah. pr prior to his trial, and he's only been there two weeks. And this is, you know, so many times, Arthlane, we forget the tenderness of when parents first hear about their child yeah. being ar arrested. And, I mean, when I look back on that in my own life and I realize how I was just gripped with this pain and I could hardly make it through every day. And the tears would just well up at unexpected moments. And when you're tender like that and you run into somebody this kind, mm -hmm. It's like you, the tears just overflow. That, that whole story is pretty supernatural. You might not believe it if you didn't know her. Uh, oh, 
and this girl. And that she had, probably with her life going pretty good, she had decided to minister to you. Yes. Um, and then she gets hit with the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's a God thing. It's so overwhelming. Um, in your book, Waiting Together, and I can't recommend it high. And, you know, if you know anybody with a, a relative in prison, what, what, a, what a gift if you would uh, get that for them. And the website's on the screen. You get it through there. It's called Waiting Together. You can get it on Amazon. Um, but here's one of your quotes from the broken hearts outside of the prison walls give splashes of joy. I, I like that term. Uh, They're unexpected. Uh -huh. And splashes of joy sometimes come from someone like the postal worker, somebody you're not expecting to hear from who blesses you with God's love. And sometimes mm -hmm. it comes through a text message from somebody who just says, I'm praying for you right now. God mm -hmm. put you on my heart. Sometimes it comes through an unexpected check mm -hmm. right when you're, you're out of money. You don't know how you're going to make it because it costs a lot to have an incarcerated loved one. You have the trial. You have the money that needs to go in the account. You have the visits to the prison and the food you need to buy while you're there. And for some families, that is a hard stretch. You know, I had that on my notes today um, that... Carol got hit with this phone call. It was in the middle of the night, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. That her son had murdered someone and he was, uh, he was being taken to jail. And just this cataract of, I mean, like a Niagara of, mm -hmm. I would think, throwing up, crying, oh, screaming, yes. it's not true. All of Nausea these things. Nausea sweeps over you. It, you feel like you can't even yeah, walk can't because your legs won't hold your weight. It's, it's a, I think it's the whole shock to the system where you, you can't even function. And then you had to kind of come to reality and we need lawyers and we need this, this. I'm just guessing, but I would think at your age there, you and... Gene, we're maybe putting a little way for retirement and all this like wise people would and all. And the financial, just just like a gully washer, just, okay, we need money. We need a lot of money. The financial impact is huge for these families. And I mean, we were trying to figure out what retirement account we could get enough out of so that we could pay the retainer, just the down payment for the attorney. And uh, fortunately, in our case, uh, we were able to make a large down payment and then do monthly payments. And, oh, Arthelene, as I think of the people who prayed for us, I know part of what they prayed for was that we would have enough every month. And, you know, sometimes within dollars, we had just enough. That's our God. Just enough. Boy, he's done it for me. Oh, it is su such a miracle. And I just want to say to viewers, if you have incarcerated loved ones or somebody in your church who uh, has someone they're married to behind bars, just know any small gift to that family touches them not only by helping to meet their financial mm -hmm. needs, but it lets them know that God loves them and that he nudged them to do something out of the ordinary for them, which is a way of just feeling embraced by the Father mm -hmm. God. So precious. I know, and, and God keeps track of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to get it back. I, I believe that with all my heart, that when we live with some kind of a generous spirit, and I'm not talking about giving $1,000 here and, or even 100 here, but I mean... $5, $10 or something that just you're giving a part of your heart. That's right. The Lord sees that and mm -hmm. he, he's going to give you back more. Yes, he than, is. And uh, what you did. I was, uh, some of the things that we talked about last time uh, going over when you, um, and I think this is so important because we forget what God mm -hmm. did and to sit and purposely just try to bring it up and say, thank you, Lord, because if you can trust him back then, you can trust him for the future. Mm -hmm. And I, was there a point where you just had to relinquish? Because with your situation, I thought of all the lawyers and all, mm -hmm. there was never any hope, was there? There was, there was no hope that Jason would walk away. Yeah. 
our prayer was that he would receive a sentence that would involve an eventual end of sentence mm -hmm. date. But in the state of Florida, yeah. due to the way the laws are and the way our voters have voted for mandatory minimums, uh, when when the verdict came down as first degree murder, it meant life without parole. And so that was, I mean, we came to grips with that pretty Okay, early. how do you do that? That's, oh. it's like a deep breath. That's how it is. How do I go on now? It, it, I think for a few moments, you have to give yourself permission to live in the shock of it mm -hmm. and, and to not try to figure it all out. Um, we had so many people praying for us, Arthlene, that um, I really believe there could be some kind of a miracle out yeah. there. And, and when you have that much prayer support, you're expecting God to do something so supernatural that you just can't even explain it. And we talked last time about the fact that we aren't the ones who dictate how God will be glorified. Mm -hmm. uh, he lets us know how he That's can be business. glorified. <laughs> yes. And I, I would wish he would listen to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Do it my way. You know what? We're out of time. No. How can that be? <laughs> I prepare for these shows. They've gone right out the window. Uh. Uh, but she'll be with us uh, next time. I'm telling you, just a few minutes with Carol goes by so, so quickly. But stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Wow, that's awfully rich ministry and so glad we can bring it to you. Let me remind you again that we are viewer supported and the information is coming up on your screen. You can write to us to Homekeepers Box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758. The 800 number is there for those of you who like to use credit card, debit card, 1-800-229-0059. We appreciate so much your financial involvement in this ministry. It's really the way we stay on the air and as um, it's a great privilege for me to talk to Carol and I, the richness of her ministry and how thankful I am that we can bring it to you and also the subject matter is so very important. You might know somebody who has a loved one who's incarcerated and we're, we're very thankful that we can put a spotlight on that and maybe you can think about that when you interact with those people. But please join me next time, friend, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.